What's up guys, Invisible Jiu Jitsu, David Morsegar, back with Rukash. Been asked by BJJ Eastern Europe to make you a video today on holding the back control with the uh, triangle and using it to tap people. There's a lot of information out there on how to escape the body triangle, not so much on how to hold it and actually use it as a submission, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a lot of the principles that we use for a regular triangle, because it's the same, but we're just gonna do it across the body, okay? So, this is what we're gonna do. Yeah, this way. Okay, so, I'm here, I'm controlling the back, I'm making sure to cover my choking hand, yeah, so that if he grabs my hand, the only one he can grab is the non-choking hand, just a basic back control principle, and I'm going to fall to the side. As I fall to the side, I'm going to do this. Okay. I'm going to tap him with my triangle. But, what I have to understand is, what am I trying to achieve with my triangle? And this is where people make the, the super common mistakes of, yeah, you've got a good triangle and you're holding a back control, but you're not actually applying any pressure that's gonna make him open up the neck or he's gonna tap him, okay? And that's where the triangle sits. So what I see people do is they will have their triangle and it will be going over the guy's hips. What I want is to sit it above his diaphragm, which is gonna sit just above the lungs. Uh, just above the lungs, just below the lungs, okay? So I want to constrict his ability to move his diaphragm. And he's gonna choke himself just like a, like a, a, a positional asphyxiation, okay? We're not choking up here, we're choking down here, just like a snake would do. So, couple things going on here. Always remember, my flexibility is terrible, I can't play rubber guard, so, if you can just put yourselves into these positions, fantastic. If you're not flexible, you're gonna do exactly what I do. I fall to the side, okay? And the cameraman follows me, good. I put my foot on the hip, and I pick up my shin, okay? Now this is what I see people do, and they do it wrong. They cross here. Now I can feel Wukash's shin, uh, hip bone on the back of my Achilles, so if I squeeze, it's a good control and I can work everything else, but it's not taking his, his focus away from his neck, all right? Because he's not gonna deal with anything down there. It's just controlling it, which is okay, it's good. But I want both, I want the control and the choke. So, a couple things I'm gonna do. As I fall, I'm gonna bring the knee on the side that I fall to a little bit higher. That's gonna put me in a good spot to get across his diaphragm and not low across his hips. Now if you're flexible, you could have your knee low and bring your foot up high. I can't do that, so I have to prepare, okay? So as I fall, I bring this knee a little higher up into his armpit. So I grab my shin and I put the foot on the hip. And as I pull my shin up, look, to get high, I push down on the, the hip to control him and move him away from me. And then I lock. Now on Wukash, I can get a full triangle, yeah? Good triangle on, on the shin, crook of the knee. And I hide this foot to the outside. And then I squeeze in, and then my knees go in. So what I wanna do is flare my heel, and my knees come together. So the pressure, camera is just like a regular triangle. It's down and flaring in, and squeezing my knees together. Now, I'm six foot four, and even though I'm not flexible at all, I can still get to a full triangle here. Now, if I have someone a little bit bigger, or I have shorter legs, I don't always get perfect, okay? And any, anytime we teach these videos, anytime you're taught in class, your instructor is teaching you perfect. But remember, perfect's not always possible. So we get the best that we can get, and then we work with it from there. So if I just ask Lucas to jump out a second and I bring in Shiro, Shiro's a little bit bigger. I do exactly the same thing. Knee comes high as I fall. I grab my shin, I pull it up. Now I can just about get there, but my toes, my toes start to, to straighten a little bit. Okay, and this is gonna happen with bigger dudes. 
So from here, I have to get good at applying my pressure in the same way, but just without a full triangle. Okay, so the problem here is I have to extend my foot. Now I'm reasonably flexible in my foot, so it's not a bother to me. But if it is for you, as you fall, you're going to do less bringing your heel back and more bringing your knees together. Okay, remember the two pressures are drawing down and drawing in. If drawing down is going to hurt you, you do more drawing in, knees together. Okay, so big dude, you, you get the best triangle you can get, you get it up nice and high, but it might not walk in. Okay, no ballerina feet here, right? If I have ballerina feet, that's when I start going more to my knee in position. Thank you, Sharon. We're just going to draw back. So, that's what I'm going to do to submit someone from there. And of course, the, the more experienced you are, the stronger you are with your thigh master squeeze, the better time you're going to have, the more success you're going to have. And you, you've got to be able to squeeze that for a long time. Okay? I'll squeeze it and I'll be working, you know, cranking on his neck, trying to attack my chokes, depending on you know, what, what rules we're fighting under. Always when I triangle, I keep my triangle on the top side. So, this is going to test the cameraman now because he's got to pay attention. As we fall, I do everything I just did, and Lucas knows, oh no, I need to go the other way. So, as he puts me on the other side, I have to get good at switching my triangle. He goes back. Okay, so if you do it slow, as soon as I realize I'm going, this foot crosses and I join my triangle back on the other side. Okay, so what I don't want to do is let my triangle get put on the floor. Okay, for those who don't know, if the triangle gets, uh, let's, go, let's go this way. If the triangle gets put on the floor, it's very similar to the crossing the feet from the back situation. He'll step over my foot, yes, and he'll put his hips through slowly so I don't die. And if he wants to, he can push on this knee. It can turn into a heel hook, even though it's going to be legal for white belts in IBJJF. Okay? Very nasty footlock. You only get caught in that once and, until you stop crossing or letting them fall to the side of the triangle. So very important that we switch. We do the foot on the hip, grab the shin if we need to. I grab the shin. You might not need to grab the shin. If you're Eddie Bravo and you can just swing that leg up, fantastic. Now, the worst one is when I'm on top. Because when I'm on top, I can apply all of my pressure down using gravity, using my weight. Okay? Here it's all squeeze. On top, it's squeeze plus weight. And a really nice way that I get this it's in closed guard. And I start to do my two on one, and I drag, and we come up. And now, a lot of the time, I'll, I'll try and pull him to pull him over, and he, and he has a solid base. So I can't pull, I go up instead, okay? Once I'm up, I have a locked triangle here. Don't worry, we'll change angles as well. And then I'm gonna go one, two, and spread him out. Okay, let's just go back a little bit so they can see what's going on here. So I go two on one, Marcelo style, drag, catch the armpit, we come up, and I come up into my triangle, good triangle again, not ballet feet, curl the toes. One on one, and sometimes I can do it just from here, I'll start pushing my hips into a sprawl, sometimes I go two, hands, yeah, each to a one-on-one. -on -one. But from here, I'm going to push him in and he's going to get flattened. Boom. Hips in, sprawl position, head up high. Now from here, I just do the exact same finish and he makes a noise saying tap because his hands are trapped. Okay? If, you see the head? If he doesn't tap here to the squeeze, this is perfect for me 
to start going after chokes. Or if we watch, you know, pro wrestling, you can start cranking on his neck, camel clutch style. But the pressure's the same. It's that curl pressure and it's the knees together pressure. So if I'm on top, I'm just gonna flatten him out, okay? With a one-on-one. -on -one. And what I'm aiming to do is drag his arms underneath himself so that he pins his own arms. Okay, uh, this way. So I drag, up, and I have my triangle up. You see how my knee comes through, but I leave my shin across his uh, diaphragm. There's my control. One, I can go two, and then I sprawl and flatten him out. From here he taps. If he doesn't tap, now I can start being nasty, cranking his face, choking. I'm a lot taller than Wukash, so my angle for choking is not so great from this position. Um, the shorter you are or the more uh, similar sized you are, the more you'll find the choke is here and not down by your belly. So for me, it's a bit awkward. For you, it might be a lot better. Again, Jiu Jitsu is a very personal thing. How is he built? How am I built? You know, these things factor in. So, two types of way we can finish with the body triangle, one from the bottom, one from the top. A few key rules just to go over if I have Wuxa's back, is I wanna to fall to the side of my choking hand so it doesn't get trapped underneath him. And I'm gonna go full on the hip and get to his uh, diaphragm, not over his hips. It's a good control, but it's not gonna choke anything. I want to get up high on his diaphragm here, and then it's back and in, okay? Don't underestimate the pressure with the knees. For me, most of the pressure is coming from the knees, not so much coming back. That's where the real squeeze is gonna get, okay? Across those floating ribs, contracting that diaphragm. And then we can take it a step further and we can, we can do snake principle. We squeeze, we wait for him to breathe, we squeeze more. We wait for him to breathe out, we squeeze more and more and more. And we never let him take that breath in, okay? So if I'm comfortable in this position, a little bit okay if I'm comfortable in this position I just wait okay from here it's actually not that great I need to readjust there it's perfect that's his diaphragm and then I wait for him to breathe and as he breathes oh there I squeeze more he breathes in he tries to breathe out I squeeze more and more and eventually it's gonna come okay this is what I'm talking about when I say we've got to be able to hold this squeeze for a length of time, okay? Especially in training, I'm not just bashing this on straight to 100% because it can be a rib breaker, okay? It's nasty. I put it on progressively. He has chance to tap. If he doesn't want to take the easy way out and tap to the back control, what's he gonna do? He's gonna give me his neck, okay? He's gonna give me something, all right? He's gonna freak out, he's gonna try his escapes. In the escape, in the freak out is where I'm gonna take something else, okay? so. Hopefully you found this uh, useful. Not a lot of info out there on this side of the body triangle, how we actually attack it, how we actually use it as a squeeze, as a submission. Most of it's on escaping. So if you like the video, like the video, share with all your friends. Thanks to BJJ Eastern Europe and those guys for sharing this video. And we'll see you again. Thanks a lot.